This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the superstars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Nationals Monster Truck Challenge. One competition from Memphis Motorsports Park. Here is another two-frame truck, Barefoot, the Chevrolet Fred Schaefer at a pontoon beach, Illinois. Gary, you know, you're giving us a rundown a moment ago on a pairings as he goes up against Scott Stevens out of Texas. Well, the Barefoot truck is your current national champion with one of the sanctioning bodies, the SRO Pace people. So he's carrying their colors, too. Chevrolet's a pair. Let's see what's going to happen. Advantage should go to the Barefoot by virtue of being the new chassis set up. But look, look at the air that he has. Tremendous hang time by Schaefer. He completely cleared both sets of cars, Gary Lee. Well, Barefoot in a tube-frame truck, a Chevrolet, knocks out another Chevrolet, the Auto Value King Crunch. Boy, Scott Stevens with the cantilever truck ran him hard, but the new truck, the new technology, we're going to be talking about that the rest of the day. Watch the amount of time he stays near. Look at that. Yeah, look at the air time. When you talk about technology, you're talking about suspensions. You can see the suspension work here on Barefoot. He takes the victory, a $100,000 truck that took six months to build. Let's go back and talk to the driver, Army. Fred, you're going through this first round on a unique track in a unique situation. What's it like out there? Uh, it seems like I'm getting a lot of air. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a split-second thing, but it seems like I've got a lot of hang time up there. What about the transmission? You run a different transmission, a lot of these guys. Is that an advantage to you on the start? I think it is, but, but right now, uh, I'm messing with the gears and transfer case. I really don't know what I'm supposed to do on this track, and I'm trying to feel it out, so I might be changing that between rounds. Here's another new truck that's been running very, very good. Fred Schaefer, Pontoon Beach, Illinois, in barefoot, the Chevrolet. And he takes on the Ford, no problem, John Moore at a Lafayette, Tennessee. Well, this is kind of an awkward situation to be in because one of these trucks is going to make it through the next round. The other one's going to go on a trailer, the Tonka-sponsored vehicle, Chevrolet left lane barefoot. He's your current world champion in the SRO pace category. Looks to be manhandling the Ford. Oh, Gary, he completely cleared the last set of cars. Well, let's take a look now at the time to see if he can get that buy into the finals. Remember, the time to beat was 6.43. He doesn't do it. A 6.57. That means that Bigfoot will have the buy to the finals. Look at the air. Watch the second jump. He cleared the last car by about eight feet. Gary, everybody paid a price to get through that round. Well, there's a look at Taurus, the 88 GMC, sponsored by Tonka. And there's a look at Barefoot, the 90 Chevrolet, also sponsored by Tonka. Well, Gary, the handwriting's on the wall. In order to get to the final here, you had to run the latest state-of-the-art chassis design. Well, this is a shootout between Barefoot and Taurus for the right to meet Bigfoot in the championship here at Memphis, Tennessee. And laying all the cards on the table, I'm going to be very upfront. There is no love at all between these two trucks. Well, both get a good start side by side, but over the second one. Oh, it's out of bounds for Barefoot. Barefoot will be disqualified. They lose the left rear tire on Taurus. He's in trouble. These guys... I, I keep referring to an old-time street fight. Man, this was a classic example. Barefoot disqualified. Taurus goes so hard. Look on the final jump. Now, they're clearing the first jump now, but I want you to watch Wellman. Right now, he literally pulls the trigger and clears by about five or six cars that final jump as he goes past his father, who, by the way, is dodging to get away from and Barefoot. He's jumping behind that telephone pole right there to miss Barefoot as Barefoot is disqualified for going out of bounds. Trucks have come to the Memphis area, this tremendous complex, to see who can be the strongest truck in the circle. We've got national champions from two or three different organizations. We're going to be telling you about them today. Some new names, such as the, the Bad Medicine truck we're looking at now. A lot of the guys are coming, laying all the cards on the table, trying to take the big win out of Memphis. Barefoot, Bad Medicine, first race coming at you, Gary. Two sets of jumps. There's been a problem this weekend with that second jump, the ramp going over that second set of cars, and it's all barefoot. Chevrolet barefoot goes on to take the win. The Dodge Bad Madison having his share of problems, and it comes back, Gary Lee. It looks to me like Chassis is going to tell the story today. Well, once again, barefoot in the far lane gets the good start. Watch that chassis work as he starts over that second jump, pitches to the right just a bit, and takes the big victory. As we take a look at Fred Schaefer in Barefoot out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois. Barefoot against Nightlife. There is Wayne Mozanic. He's out of Jupiter, Florida. He's a new driver to the sport. Wayne's doing an awfully good job. 
But I want you to notice the front window right now. The camera shows it to you on barefoot. He's hit so hard, he actually popped the wind out. And Schaefer has a problem. Hey, Gary, Wayne wins. Wayne wins. The newcomer will go on to the semifinals. 8.17, the time to beat now, because somebody will get a bye to the finals. Gary, that's an upset of all upsets in the sport. This guy had quick qualifying time of the day, had the field covered, but he's going on a trailer. Well, the newcomer, Wayne, continues on into our semifinals. Why don't you run down and get a word with Fred, find out what the problem was. Word we got is you were down a cylinder when you, when you went to the starting line. Uh, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with the truck. It's a kill box. You know, it, it's new, and they had to have them for this race. They've been having problems with them, and... Uh, the kill box looks like it put me out. Okay, because the engine, I, I was standing half track, it was just a clean cut like you turned the ignition off. That's exactly what happened to it. And um, they ain't going to do anything about it. It's uh, my way of losing the race, I guess. You uh, don't have any recourse at all? Well, they said I was out. I mean, what, what are you supposed to do? I come out here and I get fast time two days in a row, and, and this is what happens to me. So uh, that's all I can do. We take a look at Bad Medicine, Don Van Lu, Jefferson City, Missouri. And here is Fred Schaefer in the dreaded barefoot. There's a motion picture about a monster named Fred. And the monster truck guys, they know the story on barefoot. We told you earlier, he's here just to do one thing, thump these guys big time. He picks on Van Lu, who relies on the Chrysler horsepower. And well, that's not going to be enough. Look at the air as Fred clears the first set of cars and motors easily over the second. And he has an easy victory here in round one. The truck is actually about six inches longer than any other trucks. So it launches six inches further back in, in cleaner dirt, if you will. And Fred has the muscle under the hood to power over those cars. Here's Fred with Army. Probably the strongest Chevrolet truck in America is Fred Schaefer's National Champion Chevrolet. Fred, basically, you just came in here, you're throwing all the cars on the table. Only the baddest of the bad is going to walk out of this one today. There are some bad boys here today, and we got a big crowd army, and uh, everybody's pumped up. There's a lot of flogging going on in the pit area, and it's going to be one heck of a race today. And here is a look at Scott Stevens in the Auto Value King Crunch, and he goes up against Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. You know, it's kind of interesting. Schaefer comes in here. The scenario is almost like a gunfighter. You know, he's not supposed to be here. I don't think these guys want him here. Scott Stevens knows he is going to have the race of his life on his hand right now to get past that Barefoot truck. These guys don't compete against each other that often. Stevens jumped him on the light, Gary. Oh, he got a good cut, but oh, look, look at it. the air. Fred Schaefer way up in the oh. air. Oh, problem for Scott Stevens. He is upside down. That truck looks like it's really been hurt. We'll watch to see for Scott if Scott can climb out as the crew runs over. They're the safety crew, his crew. They look in the cage. Look at the destruction to that Chevrolet. They're peeling the fiberglass away now. We can only wait. Well, Scott is out of the truck. Gary, his crew chief, uh, Tracy Smart, is an EMT. He's with him right now. Larry Hoffman, Blower Drive Service. The right people are there. But meanwhile, Barefoot's trying to work his way back. The race for the next round gets ready. But the question at hand, how bad does Scott Stevens get hurt on this? And how bad does Scott tear up the truck? Obviously, the truck is not our concern when a driver may be injured, but it looks like he hit that rough spot over there in that left lane. The high that side. turned yeah. him sideways. It's like hooking a rut in a sprint car. You've used that before. It's exactly what happened. This camera angle should show you real good. Look at the air of the hang time Schaefer had on the left of your screen. Now he pulls back on Stevens. Stevens, bad right hop. Right there, yeah, he yeah. catches that rut and rolls him on over. A lot of damage. Well, Gary, that run tore up two good monster trucks. Scott Stevens seems to be the worst for wear. Schaefer's going to be back in the next round. They right the Stevens truck. The crew chief's looking at it. I wonder what's going through his mind right now, Gary Lee. Here, Andy Brass in Bigfoot 8 out of St. Louis, Missouri. And look who he's going up against. Barefoot Fred Schaefer, the last truck, the 13th truck to arrive today. And he has a shot at the finals. The bottom of the barefoot sign on the truck is said, racer and that's exactly what Fred Schaefer is he came in here he's gonna run whoever he has to run and I'm gonna be upfront about this thing Fred Schaefer does not like the Bigfoot guys one bit Schaefer has the advantage headed to the second set of cars look at this the Chevrolet takes the win over the Ford of Bigfoot well the Chevy fans are happy as barefoot Fred Schaefer beats out the Bigfoot eight of Andy Brass watch how soft barefoot lands not a lot of bounce. Look at this. He absorbs the impact. That's why that truck goes so quick. 
And look what lane he was in. The right lane, big foot to left lane. Here's the winner with Army. This is a guy that's always wanted to race this way. When I say this way, I mean, look, let's let the cars go where they may. Fred, this is exactly, if you had to write a script, this is the way you'd write it, isn't it? This is the race, and uh, we got Gary Porter out there with Caroline Crusher. He's a tough customer to come, and it's going to be a real good finish, I think. You have lane choice. I do. I need to ask where you're going to go. Oh, I'm going to stay in that lane. I think we got a pretty good lane right there. What happens 10 feet off the line? A while ago, it looked to me like you almost short shifted the truck or something. Ten, you rolled, and then 10 feet out, it went like a rocket. Uh, I think it's starting to hook a little bit better. I think the dirt's a little loose in the starting line, and then those tires are really digging in about 10 feet out. So hopefully we can get that starting line cleaned off a little bit by doing some burnouts and go for it. Well, the Bowtie Brigade will love the finals because it will be Chevy against Chevy coming up next. We are ready now for the championship shootout. Chevy against Chevy. Barefoot, Fred Schaefer against the Carolina Crusher and Gary Porter. Schaefer is doing something that is new to this sport. He's actually doing a dry hop or a burnout on the starting line. I told you earlier that truck is six inches longer than everybody else's. That means if you start in the tracks of the man in front of you, you got to go over a little hump where he dug the track out. Schaefer's digging his own track out. And I think that he was kind of spoofing me a minute ago. Something is happening to that truck 10 feet off the starting line. I believe he's making a transmission shift. He runs a Lenko transmission just like they run in the dragsters. I just think he might have something up his sleeve. Well, let's find out. It's a good hole shot by Gary Porter, but look at Fred Schaefer make up the ground out of control, but he's going to win it. Hang on. I thought he was going to roll over. Well, I, I believe we might have a disqualification here. Schaefer, watch the screen. There's an out of bounds on the right side. Schaefer was pushing it. Boy, Porter left the line like a rock. 10,000 pound trucks leaving just as hard as pro stock drag cars. Look at this. Plus, they jump 20 and 30 feet in the air. Schaefer has the advantage, but right here, he's going to get disqualified. And that means the Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter, will take the victory here in Bloomsburg. Rolling. This guy is on a roll. You like Chevrolet, you got to know and love Fred Schaefer. Well, Fred Schaefer is the fast qualifier, which means he gets lane choice. These drivers do not like the lane that Snake Bite is running in right now. And it's all Fred Schaefer, oh. Army. What a clean run. Oh, here we go again. Snake Bite's in trouble through the Hydra barrier. And oh, look at that. Is again. anybody in the building? The story's building at the end of the track. Gary, he completely demolished it, literally ran through it. Look. Well, there's a chest freezer that he's on top and of course the fans are on their on their feet right now showing a concern as the safety crew members are over there one checking on the driver and making sure no one was inside that storage unit let's watch again let's see where he gets in trouble once again a short shutdown area short shutdown area the problem comes at the end of the run with the back of the truck i want you to notice when he lands down he'll basically what we call spring the back up see now he's on the nose the back comes down notice the rear wheels turning he is just along for the run. I wonder why they didn't hit the kill box to shut him off, though. He goes right through the hydro barriers. They basically would have done their job had the truck not been under a throttle-up condition, Gary. Well, we are being told now that there, there was no one in that storage area. No one uh, injured. The driver is okay. Colt Cobra a bit stunned, we are being told. Now, he climbs out. And uh, you can see how slowly he comes out. At this point, any driver in motorsports starts to collect his thoughts, exactly. starts to clear the cobwebs out of the head to assess the damage and try to go back and reassess what happened. Well, he's coming out. First thing he did was look at the GTS fiberglass body to make sure it's okay. It's amazing. It was not torn up that much. Take a look at the that. micro machine to your right and barefoot to your left. Fred Schaefer, the fast qualifier here this afternoon. You know, Fred Schaefer is kind of, if there's such thing as an outlaw monster truck driver, it's Fred. He just likes to race. He doesn't care what sanctioned body, what circuit. He just wants to line up next to anybody and race them. And as a rule, this is what he does. He beats them. He's going to be the guy to beat today, Gary Lee. Mark my word. Well, he was the fast qualifier, and look at this hole shot. I mean, he has the victory right there. Yeah, the front end's up off the ground. That's a 12,000-pound truck, and he's pulling a wheelie at the 50-foot mark. Now we have semifinal action. We take a look at Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher, against Fred Schaefer in barefoot, a pair of Chevrolets. This could be the quickest run of the day. Fred Schaefer, look for a wheels-up run. The Crusher's not going to roll over. Both of them Chevrolet. It's going to be quick. Oh, Porter leaves. Schaefer airs it out. And Schaefer oh. takes it by a fender. Fred Woo. Schaefer, the fast qualifier. And you can see why he was the fast qualifier. Look at it again, Army. They leave. Well, the whole shot, you're right, goes to Gary Porter. 
Gary Porter worked off a line lock like the drag racers use on the transmission to get the initial jump, but Schaefer just muscles by with that horsepower in the far lane. Well, it could have been the gearing that won it for Fred Schaefer. I think it just came down to old brute horsepower, Gary. <laughs> hey, Gary, remember when you were a kid and you kind of ran into the neighborhood bully? He says, you hit me, and you said, no, you hit me. You hit me first. No, you hit me first. That is not the case today. I guarantee you, somebody, when that light goes green, is going to punch the other guy as quick as they can. Like an old-time gunfight, somebody's going to sucker punch the other one. They shorten the track. Drivers have made adjustments. you got one Ford, one Chevrolet, and there's another player here. Fred Schaefer has never won on this circuit. It's the third time that he's run here. He's been a world champion before, but he's never beaten these guys. This could be the day. But in order to do it, he's got to get past Bigfoot. They're going to the line right now. Let's see who's going to win this classic Ford and Chevrolet battle. Well, Army, as we take a look at Fred Schaefer, we have the ideal situation in bracket racing. We have the fastest two qualifiers going side by side for the championship. Bigfoot, that is Bigfoot 8, the frame tube truck out of St. Louis, Missouri, and he goes up against the Chevrolet of Barefoot. Barefoot, the fast qualifier. Andy Brass, the second fast qualifier. Horsepower is going to win it, Gary. That's what it all narrows down to. What Schaefer is at. Look at that. Schaefer takes Schaefer his first wins win. It. Schaefer wins it. They were wow. side by side, fender to fender, coming off the line. But as you indicated, horsepower will win here this afternoon. Horsepower did win. Watch the front wheels on Schaefer. He has got the feet out of the water and walking the dog as he hits that first ramp. And there you can see the length of the victory for Fred Schaefer as Andy Brass will take Bigfoot back to the trailer. And let's go down and talk to our winner. Well, Gary, persistency is a part of, of any kind of motorsport. Third time's charm for you, but man, it didn't come easy, did it, Fred? No, it didn't. There's some fast trucks out there, and it, and, uh, it was a real good race. You keep talking about the other fast trucks. You're, you know, you've always been a player. You run just as hard, and you proved it today as these guys. You've had some bad luck over the year, but all the cards went down on the table today. It was two blue trucks, and you're the winner. Yeah, thank you very much, Army. It was a good race. Thank you very much. And our congratulations to Fred Schaefer. He takes the win here. That will wrap it up from Union Grove, Wisconsin. And coming up next, we have Barefoot. He's the second fast qualifier, Fred Schaefer, out of Illinois. And he goes up against no problem. Here is John Moore. This is unique. You got the Ford and the Chevrolet, that makes a war, but also you got two different theories. You got the Chevrolet with the longest wheelbase in the sport. He's about 18 inches longer than the Ford. Short wheelbase, long bill wheelbase, there's been a lot of theory, a lot of philosophy on this. We're going to find out which one works right now. I believe Barefoot's got a handle on this thing, Gary. Well, he was the second fastest in qualifying, while no problem, John Moore was only eighth quick. Yeah, and more right there. Yeah, more moved on him, but. Boy, that big old Chevrolet just settled down and went to war on the All other barefoot, the long wheelbase pickup truck, and barefoot advances. Watch again. Once again, the starting line worked for both trucks, but boy, that new technology really shows up on the top end of this track for the Chevrolet camp. So barefoot will advance to round two. As we... Now, let's go back to the standard shock absorber that's going to be coming out on Steve Hess's truck. That's the old style setup. A lot rougher ride with the old setup. The new Custer shocks, I believe, Gary, the ways to go. Well, we're looking at the GMC they call Nightmare out of uh, Indiana. And here is Barefoot, Fred Schaefer on board the Chevrolet. Schaefer the racer. They call him Barefoot. He's running the new shocks. We just gave you a comparison. I want you to watch how these trucks land, how they react to impact. So you're saying that Fred should have a smoother ride because Soft. of the new suspension. Exactly, should have a softer ride. Look at that. Oh, man. Well, he picked the front end up, almost got off the racetrack. I'm not sure, but what, perhaps he got disqualified. Did he cross the start-finish line? No, he's okay. One of the things about Schaefer, he is a racer, just like I say. He wants to win. He has never won on this circuit. He's been in the final. He's been the first one across the finish line in the final, but was disqualified. He's awfully close here, but that's not the case. Schaefer will be back at barefoot. How about this camera shot from the underbelly of Nightmare? And look at the abuse these trucks take. Let's go back down trackside. Here's Fred Schaefer. Well, Gary, the guy that's quick of the day is trying to go quicker. The word we're getting, you're changing gears back there. Yeah, uh, Army, it's, it's a short starting line up a little bit, and I'm experimenting, and I didn't like what it did, so I'm going back. Well, you're going quicker than anybody right now. Uh, I want to try and go a little quicker. All right, we'll see you. Thank you. Always the object in motorsports. I told Going you he was a racer, a didn't quicker, I? Yeah. I guess so. Here's Fred Schaefer in barefoot, and he will go up against the fastest loser from round two, and that is Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. 
But once again, Gary, it comes down to a horsepower game. The chassis are about the same. The horsepower advantage should go to barefoot. Remember, Schaefer has never won in this particular type of competition against these trucks. He has been to the final. Wow, look at that. You see it? You see him carry the front end? Literally powered. Horsepower, raw horsepower. And they get together on the end of the track. That was just a love tap right there. That was kind of a congratulations. That's called nice driving ride. it out the back door big time. Look at this. Watch him pull the wheelie right here as he gets on the throttle. Look at this. It's like two pit bulls going after each other. Neither one's going to give. So Bare. Barefoot will go against Bigfoot for the championship here in Wisconsin. Battle of the Blues, brother. It's Chevy against Ford. And there is a good look at Fred Schaefer. Oh, what horsepower he had. There's just a little nudge right there. No damage. No harm, no foul. We're ready for a championship of competition here from the uh, Union Grove Racine County Fairgrounds here in Wisconsin. The championship coming up next. Gary, a lot of times we come back to the people, we tell them they're going to see a war. And in and, and, and monster truck racing, that's a fact. These guys are going after each other. There's no love lost between a couple of different teams. Fred Schaefer and Bob Chandler are strong competitors. A lot of respect there, but there's still no love lost. There's one difference. One drives a Ford, one drives a Chevrolet. The only common denominator, each one wants to drill the other guy to the wall. It's that time. Let's see who's going to walk out of here the winner. And there is a look at Fred Schaefer. The open face helmet. He drives the Chevrolet barefoot alongside Andy Brass in Big Foot 8. Gary Lee, you know what they're calling this down on the track side? They're calling it a Dr. Scholl's final. <laughs> you got to have a foot to get in this one. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. Oh, but look at the battle, though. What a great, what a great championship run. And it was barefoot. But look again, Army. Watch him pull the foot out of the water. Look at the hang time, but the best foot forward belongs to Fred Schaefer. Fred, I tell you what, congratulations to you. As, as always, you line up against the Chandler operation, it's going to be a war. Uh, that was the bad guy, and that was the one I was worried about. Well, congratulations. Today It was definitely the day of the bear in Wisconsin. Thank you, Army. That wraps it up here in Wisconsin for Army Armstrong. I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Gary, right now, I know a guy that is really aware of everything in this building. Fred Schaefer is in the very same lane that Porter was running in. Same type truck, same horsepower. Is his truck going to react the same? That's the big question. That's got to, again, be a little bit of a psychic problem coming out of that right-hand lane. He'll be going up against Brian Welch, a guy we're not that familiar with. Drives a truck called Moving Violation. He's out of Indiana, so Brian can put a big notch in his gun right now. But the big question is, Schaefer keep it straight. Brian also is very aware of that problem earlier with Gary Porter, but uh, there's no contest there and no problem for Fred Schaefer. He keeps it straight as the barefoot takes the victory. Here's a guy that kind of cherry picks the events that he likes to compete in, but anytime he goes out, he's a threat to win it. He reminds There's a good look at Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Now, Schaefer's the hired gun in the sport. I love this guy. You put the money out there, he'll come race for it. The ideal scenario for Fred is to get the front end up. Now, Gary Porter has the same psyche. They both want to go wheels up on the starting line and actually hit the first jump with the rear tires. Let's see if either one of them is going to be able to figure it out. This will be a good start. It'll be a quick run. See, both of them wheels up. Porter's out on Gary it. Porter Jake. takes it. Wow. Gary Porter takes the victory in the Carolina Crusher over the, uh, as you call him, the hired gun. Fred Schaefer, and that, speaking of a hired gun, was a great shootout. These guys are like two bullies in high school just trading licks back and forth. Want to get one one day, want to get one the other day. But see the wheels up start? Gary Porter did exactly what he wanted to do. He did not hit the first obstacle with the front tires. He hit but it with Fred the rear Fred had to back out of the throttle because he was out of shape coming off that opening jump, and that's where Gary Porter took the advantage. Now watch. He veers off to the right. He's out of shape right here. He backs out of the throttle to maintain control. Yeah, I mean, he tried to burp the throttle, pull it back on, but too late. Porter was already on the other end. Hey, but that's what monster truck racing is all about, and that's why people love it so much. Fred Schaefer, the fast loser from this round. He'll be back in competition as he's Speaking of horsepower, Barefoot and Taurus. Gary, probably the two most powerful trucks on the circuit. Here's a look from inside the cockpit. Seated alongside Eldon Depew in Taurus and Fred Schaefer in the cockpit up barefoot. This should be a dandy. 
Told you it's going to be a goofy round. Is anything weird going to happen? Uh, barefoot. Barefoot comes back as a fast loser and takes the victory. And that means that Barefoot will go up against Crusher for the championship here in the Hoosier Dome. And all night long, everybody is still trying to get these trucks figured out. Barefoot comes up on the left side of the screen. Now, notice the He's gyrations. right there. Yeah, look at the gyrations of these vehicles. Don't ever think for them. It's like somebody tells me drag racing, straight racing. No, monster truck racing is not straight either. These guys are all over that track. Bam. Big bounce, big bounce, shutting it down. Up on his left, up on his right. Now he's got to throttle back, sliding in a concrete wall. That's monster truck racing, Gary. We have a foot in the final, but the foot is a Chevy. It's barefoot. Fred Schaefer, you came back as a fast loser. That's all it took. Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a fast track. Gary's running real hard tonight, and uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting race for the final. Indeed it should be as we take a look at the eyes of Gary Porter, the Carolina Crusher. He goes up against Fred Schaefer's barefoot next. Did you... The Chevy fans are ready for the final from the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong and Chevy against Chevy. Gary, I made an observation a moment ago. We had a camera shot showing the intensity of Gary Porter. In Vietnam, we call that a thousand meter stare. That's the type of intensity this final is set up. Porter's not the only driver in a monster truck with the same stare. This building is not a thousand meters long. Here we go, final time. Chevrolet's a pair. North Carolina going against Illinois. Horsepower track at his best. Both of these guys are ready to do their thing, Gary. Right there off the start, it's the Carolina Crusher. Fred Schaefer gets in trouble in barefoot, but it was all Gary Porter. Ooh. How'd you like that explosion there? Mm. That caught me by surprise. Me too. I was ducking. I didn't know what was going on. You thought you were back in Vietnam. Yeah. Well, anyway, we got a good monster truck final. Just a little bit of a hesitation by the barefoot truck. Cost him on the starting line. Porter goes out, legs the horsepower, and that's Chevrolet engine. And hey, Porter's night. Money goes back to North Carolina from the Indiana. And you can see each pass, Gary Porter had it dialed in. He had trouble early on in qualifying. He had trouble with his first round pass. But after that, he got that chassis dialed in. People don't realize that these monster truck drivers are like any other kind of racers. They're constantly working on their trucks between rounds. You don't just put the big tires on and go racing. This is a sport of technology. They're always trying to tweak them as you guys.